So for the last couple of weeks, I have been brainstorming and sketching a ton of ideas on how I want to run all the electrical accessories on the Jeep Gladiator. And I think I've come up with a pretty good solution. We're going to be putting a refrigerator back here, an air compressor, some auxiliary lights, and a couple other little things. And they're all going to be routed into this box here. Now this is totally custom. Fingers crossed this works out. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad. And today in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a custom project that I'm gonna be doing here in the back of the Gladiator. And this is not a how-to video, this is a what I'm doing video because I'm gonna be figuring this out as I go. I've done some brainstorming and I've done some sketches and I think I've got this all laid out the way I want, but as it evolves, I'm sure there's gonna be things that I'm gonna change. And my good buddy Marco's coming over, he's gonna lend me a hand, it'll be great to have his help. But before I show you everything that we're gonna be installing and talk a little bit about the project, let me bring you up to speed on two things already. One, uh, many of you may notice that we are in a different garage. Well, I did move last month and out of that dungeon, that unfinished, small, cramped two-car garage that I've been filming at in the last two years, and we are now here in a nice three-car garage, nice clean walls. This is gonna be a great place to film here in the future. And two, let me show you what I've done at the front of the Gladiator since last time we've talked. Now, if you had an opportunity to watch the Jeep Gladiator introduction video, you'll know that the one thing I wanted to get rid of was that front plastic bumper. And so I've done that and I've swapped it out with a Mopar steel stubby bumper. I just like these bumpers because they're very functional and I just like the lines of them. They look great. Also up here, I've installed a couple lights. So in the bumper, I've got the G4 KC Amber fog lights, and I like the amber just because they penetrate that dust and fog and rain so much better. And then up here, using the existing bolt holes in the bumper, I've installed the KC Highlights Pro 6, and these are a driving light, and I just love the way these lights look, but they perform really well. I will be installing a winch here soon, uh, but more on that later. Let's go check out all the stuff we're going to be installing today, because that's our meat and potatoes for this video. All right, let me show you everything I've got laid out here on the table that I've acquired over the last couple weeks in preparation for this project. And again, this is custom stuff, so uh, we're, we're gonna be kind of piecing this together and hopefully uh, we've got everything, but we may have to make some trips to the hardware store, we'll see. But let me just kind of go through this. So what we've got here right in the center is really the heart of this project, which is the S-Pod Bantam system. And I've got two HD controllers that we're gonna be using, and I'll explain why we have two here in a little bit. Uh, I've got some aluminum plate, uh, we've got some 12 gauge and 16 gauge wire, hopefully I've got enough. We've got some braided wire protectors, we've got a ton of stainless steel hardware, we've got an air compressor which we're going to be installing and all the wiring for that, and some other miscellaneous fittings. I think it's time to get started guys, Marco should be here in a minute, so let's do this. All right, so we're going to be using this Lightner pod as the central hub of where all the electrical accessories are gonna be going in. And so we've got the Bantam S-Pod here where we can run everything, just keeps things very nice and clean. And then from here, we can run the power straight to the battery. So we're not just running a ton of wires to the front of the Jeep. And so the goal is to mount this on this aluminum plate. And then this aluminum plate is gonna sit in the back here. And we're gonna do a little trimming and make that fit nice and clean. And then the air compressor is gonna sit down here on the bottom. And then we've got some of these wire fittings. And we're gonna to try to run all the wires here on the side, which means we're gonna to have to drill some holes. So we're just trying to get some measurements and do a little fabrication just to get everything to fit nice and neat. This is gonna be pretty cool. Once Marco arrived, he jumped right in and grabbed the Dremel and started trimming the aluminum plate. Now, Marco and I have done several projects in the garage together, and what I love about him is he really enjoys figuring out solutions to problems and is very detail-oriented. After cutting and grinding and test fitting, we made the aluminum fit into place in the back of the pod. Next, we took several measurements to figure out where we wanted to drill the holes to mount the aluminum plate. The good news is here, if we would have messed up, we could have easily filled the holes with some kind of silicone or epoxy and then just re-drilled them. But thankfully, everything lined up just as we intended. 
Then we drilled four holes in the aluminum for the one and a half inch stainless steel bolts we'd be using to mount the aluminum plate to the back of the pod. We used a one inch stainless steel spacer to keep the plate slightly off the back of the wall of the pod to allow us a place to hide some of the wires. Now for the holes we were going to be mounting the S-Pod and controller to on the aluminum plate, we decided to tap them so we didn't have to put a nut behind the mounting plate to make it easy if we needed to remove this. Once we had the S-Pod and controller mount in place, it was time to line everything up. We had to make a few minor adjustments here and there, but everything came together very nice. Finally, we bolted up the plate to the pod, wired up the HD controller to the S-Pod, and then added the cover. Dude, you have the brain of an engineer, man. I love it. Uh, okay, so Marco has come up with a couple little things that were very essential. You saw that we drilled the holes to get the aluminum plate in there, but deciding to tap those holes for the Bantam and the, the mount, dude, that's gonna make it really easy to remove the units yeah. instead of removing the whole plate, yeah. just remove the parts. Right. Because the key thing with this whole thing is, you know, it needs to be able to come out if I need to. For whatever reason, I need to move things around or I need to pull this box off. I need to have a way to take everything apart. So we're thinking about that as we're going through this process. When we start to wire, we've also got to consider, okay, can we remove the wires once we get everything done? So uh, this was probably the hardest part of this whole thing. Now we're going to do is uh, mount the compressor. And then uh, my garage gets really hot in the afternoon, so that may be all we do today, but we may start doing some wiring and some lights over the next couple days, because that'll be easier running all that. Uh, but I love how clean this looks, dude. This is coming together really yeah. nice. The dual ARB compressor I will be using has a mounting plate that is easy to remove and allows you to use the existing holes as a template. Now we gave a good amount of consideration to where we wanted to mount the compressor. We could have done it on top or on side of the pod, but with the aluminum plate spaced out, it was just too tight a fit. Plus having the compressor lay flat inside the pod will not add stress to the walls and it'll make sure that it stays securely mounted. Now after a few measurements, we bolted it right up to the pod. And I had purchased another aluminum plate thinking I was gonna use it as a base, but the injection mold of the pod is actually fairly thick and we felt confident just bolting the compressor directly to the pod would be sufficient. Buddy, thank you. This looks so good, man. I'm so glad you came over. So we got the air compressor mounted up there and it works great. We've just been over the last half hour just talking wires because there's a lot to think about. Yes, yes. Uh, we got to figure out how we want to run the wires out of the box and all, we got to go to the chassis, to the main battery, and then we've also got the other HD panel that we got to run inside the cab. And so we've got these uh, gland, I don't know, what do you call them? Wire glands. Wire yeah. glands. And the ones I ordered are a little small because we have a lot of wires that got to go in and out of here. So got to get some larger ones. Yes. Um, yeah. But other than that, the Bantam, it, it's awesome, dude. Yeah, this it, is it, great. I mean, everything's gonna be so clean in here. We just gotta get power to the box yes. and then everything else will be super simple. So uh, this is it for Marco. He's gotta head home, but over the next couple days of this video, I'll still be working on this. I've got a couple things I need to wait on ordering, but buddy, thank you so much for coming over today. You're always super helpful, man. Great project, man. Thank I love you. it. Let's finish it. Okay, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, we fast forwarded in this video almost a month ahead since we were last working on this project. And that's because we needed to order some new parts. So let's show you here what we ordered in a second to make this work. Uh, but I've been gone. I've been in Alaska. I did a 10 day trip there, which was amazing. And you can see that the Gladiator no longer fits in the garage. And that's because we did a roof rack install, a lift and tires. And so things are a little higher. I could take some stuff off the top and get it in here, but this is gonna work out just fine. So let me show you what we ordered and then I'll tell you a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today. So I ordered some 20 foot battery cable, which is a, a very thick, I think this is four gauge. It is four gauge. Uh, and so we're gonna run that all the way from the battery through the frame rail, fingers crossed I can do that, and then up to the box. I think that's gonna be a much better solution than what we kind of thought of before. Uh, I had to get some longer cable to run the uh, command center that's gonna go inside the Jeep. So we have a 25 foot one there, and then I have a smaller one that's gonna go from the S-Pod to this little bus terminal, which is where the battery cables and that are gonna go. This has been interesting because I originally ordered these guys thinking these would fit perfectly, but they got here and I was like, wow, these are so massive. Uh, so we're just going with a smaller bus cable. Gotta drill some holes in the box and then 
had to get some larger wire glands. We had some of these originally, but uh, because of the larger battery cable and the amount of wires that are gonna be going in there, I'm probably gonna install two or maybe three of these guys. So we're gonna have to drill a couple of one inch holes. Uh, and I think that's it. Hopefully I can get this wired up today, get it everything working and see if we can get that compressor running so we at least got something going and then we can worry about lights and stuff later. Before running the battery cables, I wanted to first cover it with the braided line. This adds another layer of protection and I think just gives it kind of a clean look. It is a little bit tedious threading the wire through the braided line. If you ever played with those Chinese finger traps when you were a kid, it's very similar to that. You kind of have to compress and stretch and compress and stretch and eventually the wire will feed through it. Once I had both wires wrapped up, I fed them through a hole just on the rear side of the battery down through the tire well. And then there is a convenient hole in the frame rail and I just ran those wires all the way down as far as I could into the front of the truck bed. Having some 550 cord to help you pull those cables up through that little truck bed area is really helpful. All right, so I got the positive and negative wires all the way to the end of the Jeep there, going through the frame rail. Uh, 20 feet was just a hair too long, but I think it's still gonna be able to be a nice clean look. I'm not gonna trim that because I really don't wanna have to mess with those ends if I don't have to. While I was doing that, a hummingbird decided to come inside my garage and now he can't figure out how to get out. So I'm gonna see if I can come up with something clever to kind of help him maybe head towards the door or something. Poor little guy, I hope he does okay. Okay, uh, so now I've got the pod out here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount those glands. Like I said, I think I need three of these, so I'm gonna have to drill three one inch holes. And then we're gonna put the bus in here and I think I've got a perfect spot for that. The whole concept of this thing is I still wanna be able to disconnect and remove everything if I wanna move this around, or if I need to take it off. And we're still gonna be able to do that with this bus terminal and the way everything's gonna be wired. So. Let me see if I can save this hummingbird and then I'm gonna get started on this. So I decided to mount the wire glands on the bottom of the pod. I did go back and forth a little bit about whether I should mount them on the bottom or on the side, but because the bus terminal was gonna be on the side, it was just gonna make the wires coming in from the bottom a little bit easier. So I took some measurements, then drilled a pilot hole and some one inch holes for the glands. Now these larger glands allowed more access for the wires, but it was still a very tight fit for the two battery cables. So out came the Dremel and I got it all sorted. Okay, so the holes for the three wire glands are drilled, everything fits, it's gonna work perfectly. Now I'm uh, getting this bus terminal mounted and if you see here, there are two holes and they're diagonal from each other. And so what I did was, what anybody would do, is on the outside of the case, I just set it up there and marked my holes to drill, drilled the holes out and then I realized, oh, when you flip this thing around, now the holes are on the wrong side. So uh, I always share my mistakes with you and I just made one, but not a big deal. It's easy enough to just to fill those plastic holes with some silicone or whatever, uh, but we're gonna get this mounted and then we can start wiring. And good news, the hummingbird made his way out of here. Now many of you know how passionate I am about being out on the trail and how much joy I just get from it. But I also love working in the garage, especially with my sons or friends. It's just a different kind of enjoyment for me. I love doing this kind of stuff. Okay, before putting the pod back into place, I connected the S-Pod directly to the newly installed bus terminals and the main compressor power to the bus terminals as well. And then the compressor wire switches I connected to the S-Pod. Then it was time to install the Lightner pod back on the rack and then run the wires up through those cable glands that I had just installed. Things are starting to look really clean and we're almost done here. All right, well, moment of truth. I've checked, double checked, and just kind of gone over the wiring over and over several times just to make sure that it all looks good. Everything's where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna power this thing up and fingers crossed it works. Here we go, guys. All right, fingers crossed. Now, I don't have the little uh, chuck that goes in here, so if this turns on, it's just gonna start spewing air, but there we go, guys. Ah, it works, awesome. 
Well, I am super happy with how that turned out, and it's going to be so functional. But there are a few things still left to do. Uh, one, I want to get some kind of cover on that bus terminal just so that's not exposed. Uh, the wiring, I'm just going to go through and clean that up a little bit, and anywhere where it's going in and out of the frame, I'll probably add some rubber there just so it, that metal doesn't eat through the wiring. And the other thing I'm going to do is there is a fuse between the ARB compressor and the bus terminal, and also a fuse in between the S-Pod and the bus terminal, but I'm going to add one more fuse here near the battery on the main power supply that we ran, and that's just in case anything happens between here and that bus terminal. I don't want things to short out, so that's something we'll do. The other thing is uh, having that compressor in there, being a black box, that thing's going to get hot. Uh, I'm only going to run the compressor when it's open, but there will be some heat in there, and so I'm going to try to think about some way to maybe ventilate heat, maybe some kind of waterproof ventilation system in there, just so heat can escape and a little bit of flow of air. I don't know, we'll figure that out. The good news is that now any accessories I want to run is going to be really easy. When we hook up a fridge, hook up some side lighting, some backlights, some bed lights, some rock lights, whatever I want to do, all I got to do is run those wires through those holes we drilled and straight to the S-Pod. That's what I love about the S-Pod. It makes it so easy and simple to do and it's going to stay nice and clean. Hey, a big thanks to my buddy Marco for helping me out on the beginning of this project. If you're watching Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.